Hi everyone, welcome to Blue Heron Hill. I am Sue. If you notice, I did change the name of my channel. I changed it to Blue Heron Hill. That's what I've always called my place here. And so I thought I should do that. Uh, nothing has changed. You should be able to access this channel just like you were before. If you're new, think of subscribing. Be one of my first subscribers to Blue Heron Hill. Anyway, what we're talking about in this video are brassicas. It's a whole huge family of delicious vegetables to grow in your garden. Uh, they are mostly cool weather plants. They don't do well in the hot, hot weather, but you can get an early spring crop in and then you can get in a fall winter crop. Depending upon where you live, uh, some of these might even be able to winter over. So um, I hope you know what your zone is. Your zone just refers to when your last frost date is in the spring and your first frost date is in the fall. And so accordingly, you will know um, when to plant your crops. With brassicas, I like to start them indoors in the springtime, um, about eight or nine, maybe even sometimes 10 weeks ahead of my last frost date. But they'll grow on up and I will get them out into my garden about three, four weeks before my last frost date. They can tolerate a light frost. Now these brand new little babies, I will, if we are going to get temperatures that dip below um, 30, perhaps 30 degrees Fahrenheit or zero Celsius, then I will cover them up with a, a little row cover or something like that to keep the real severe effects of a frost away from them. But anyway, brassicas are a great crop to grow. If you are just a beginner, some of the three of the easiest things to grow, which are in the family of brassica, is uh, radishes, kale, and mustard greens. Radishes, so easy to grow. Pop those seeds into the soil when the soil is warm enough or has warmed up. You probably want it at least about 40, oh, yeah, probably at least 50 to 60 degrees. Pop those seeds in there and you will have a harvest within four to five weeks. Kale. Pop those seeds in there and those kale plants will just take right off. Um, I start my kale indoors so I have a little jump start on it. Uh, my summers can get hot and I know kale just doesn't like the heat of it. So if I can get a crop in before the temperatures get too hot, then that's good. And then I can get another crop of kale in in the fall. Same with mustard greens. Um, you can start those either by seed out in your garden or indoors and transplant them out. Uh, kale and mustard greens, I don't use too much in the kitchen. I grow those as supplemental feed for my chickens and for my bunnies. So having these relatively short growing periods, the radishes, the kale, and the mustard greens, they make an ideal uh, plant to put in your beginner gardeners. Now brassicas are considered heavy feeders, so they draw a lot of the nutrients out of your soil. So prepping your soil is imperative. And I, am prep, I prep my soil with compost, and some well-rotted manure. Now I have chickens, so I have plenty of chicken manure, which I compost up and then put in my garden. And if some of these brassicas are in your garden long-term, it's so important then to boost the nutrients that are in your soil. So after they get growing, maybe every two weeks, you give them a shot of a liquid fertilizer, which would probably be a good thing for them. So, and it's also a good thing to compost around these brassicas. Um, when you put your, your little starts of um, 
rock blues and cauliflower in. They're just a tiny little plant in your big um, area of growing. So you want to suppress the weeds. You don't want them competing with weeds. So I always mulch them either with um, leaves, um, compost, um, any variety of things. But with brassicas, those most of those plants, the leaves are huge and they will eventually cover the soil. And so your weeds will be naturally suppressed. But one of the biggest challenges that I find in my garden with growing the brassicas is dealing with pests. You have pests like caterpillars and aphids and flea beetles and cabbage moths. And in my case, chickens. <laughs> but I just need to put the fence up for those. Well, pesticides are certainly effective against all of these. They can also cause beneficial insects and the pollinators. They can cause them harm. So I suggest then do cover your crops. Um, I always cover my brassicas with a fine netting. Uh, this lets the sunlight in, lets the water in, but keeps those pests out and not be able to lay their eggs on your brassica leaves. So be a very hands-on gardener. Look at your plants frequently. Uh, look at the undersides of the leaves. See if you see any egg uh, clusters of eggs and, and get rid of them by hand and just keep on top of them. Also, you can grow some companion plants too. Marigolds are thought to help deter some insects. Um, uh, you can plant nasturtiums, which um, many insects love nasturtiums. So you draw them over to the nasturtiums and they're kind of like a sacrificial plant and they won't then attack your, your brassicas. Now let's talk um, about individual plants that are in this um, brassica family. Okay, so brassicas like the kale and the mustard greens and even arugula can be sown directly outdoors or they can be started indoors, um, you know, four, five, six weeks before your last frost date. So radishes and turnips are root vegetables and they shouldn't be started indoors because you don't want them, you don't want to interfere with their root structure when you go to transplant them from your indoor pot to the outdoors. Now let's talk individually about specific brassicas. First up, let's talk broccoli. So depending upon the variety, they're usually harvested at about eight to 12 weeks. Um, after transplantation. Or if you start them indoors, it's usually somewhere around 13 to 18 weeks so, um, from when you put that seed into the, into the cell indoors. Um, I like to pick a variety that will give me plenty of side shoots. So it's like a bonus harvest. You know, after you cut off the head of a broccoli, you know, that beautiful broccoli crown shoots will start coming off of the stalk where the leaves join the stalk. And you can get another sweet little harvest of these tiny little broccolis in there. Cauliflower. Now cauliflower takes a little bit longer than most of the brassicas. So, but there's lots of different choices in cauliflower, lots of colors. <laughs> and uh, you can eat it raw, you can eat it cooked, you can eat it steamed, you can eat it mashed. Have you ever had the cauliflower pizza crust? Delicious. <laughs> and um, cauliflower is a good one, but takes a little bit longer to harvest. Kale. Now, lots of different varieties of kale. It's very easy to grow and you pick it uh, leaf by leaf by leaf as it comes up the stem and it lasts a very long time. Doesn't do so well in the hot of the summer, but some varieties you can get them to go throughout the winter and harvest throughout the winter and then again the next spring. 
Brussels sprouts. This is another one that takes a very long time to grow. It's very slow growing, and but it will last throughout a winter garden, even in my area. Um, and um, I don't grow it. I've tried to grow it, but I have a lot of pest pressure on uh, Brussels sprouts. Cabbage, many colors with this brassica, not just there's your traditional red cabbage, which I don't know why I call it red. To me, it looks purple. And then your green cabbage. Anywhere from 8 to about 12 weeks of harvest. If you have a very short growing season, pick one of those smaller ones uh, that, that take about 8 weeks to harvest. Um, again, another one that I put in in the spring and then I put in again in the fall for a second harvest. Um, here's another one, kohlrabi. Not many people have... Um, grow kohlrabi. It is a wonderful, it's a kind of a sweet little orb. It kind of looks like a, an alien spaceship or something like that. It um, comes in a couple different colors, comes in a purple, and then it comes in white. And you can eat it raw, and you can steam it, um, you can uh, mash it up, uh, lots of different ways. And um, it, it has a very mild flavor for a brassica. Another brassica that I grow is Chinese cabbage, sometimes called Napa cabbage. Um, it's also very easy to grow and I can get a spring crop and then again, I can get a fall crop. Um, I do start them indoors as a seedling and then bring them outside. Although you can, uh, if you wanna do succession planting, you can grow them by seed outside um, every couple weeks and you'll have them throughout the the growing season. Um, in my garden, an insect netting is a must for these. Um, the cabbage moths just love them. <laughs> also, I've had a problem with slugs, um, but I can either use beer traps or there's a, an organic uh, compound called sluggo that I have used in the past that seems to work a little bit. Um, not totally free of the slug problem, but over the past couple years, I've been working on it. Uh, turnips, very easy to grow, and you can even leave them in the ground to harvest them throughout the winter. And of course, the greens are edible too. Radishes, as I said before, super fast, easy, four weeks, five weeks from seed to harvest. And so many different varieties of radishes, some super sweet and some super hot and spicy. So you can look at those seed catalogs and pick out a few that um, you might seem to like. And they're, they're great for kids to grow because they just pop up in a couple weeks, in a, well, actually a couple days, and uh, you, they grow right before your eyes. Uh, then we've got the mustard greens I talked about, and arugula is about the same, although arugula tends to bolt in the hot uh, temperatures of July and August, so um, you can either tent them under some kind of a shade cloth, that helps, um, but mainly I just grow them in the spring and then again in the fall. Um, let's see. <clears throat> Okay, so that's a basic rundown of the brassicas that I grow in my garden. Now, a little bit of something that I need to touch on, and this, this goes for all seedlings that you start indoors and take outside. These seedlings need to be hardened off. And this is a process where you gradually take them out into the sunlight a little bit more every single day so they get used to the sun. It's not that they're going to get used to the cooler temperatures outside, but they're going to get used to the, the uh, more intense rays of the sun. And a little bit of time, day by day, 15, 30 minutes more every single day for about two weeks, and that's what you need to do. So frost tolerance is a thing, too, that you have to be aware of. You have to keep your eye out on the weather for the first few weeks that those seedlings are planted out. 
and you may need row covers or low tunnels in event of a hard frost that's coming up because we're planting these out before our average last frost date. And if your area is susceptible to hail, you need to protect them for that, from that because they'll get damaged beyond repair in that instance. So, but in general, brassicas will tolerate a light frost. So when your temperatures dip to about between 33 and maybe about 29, 28, 29 for a few hours, that might be okay. But anything more than that or temperatures that are less than that, you need to protect them for just till they get started and they get their feet into the ground and um, the temperatures at night warm up just a little bit. So brassicas are not a hard plant. A few of them have some specifics that you need to look out for, especially the pest pressure on a lot of these. But if you have some insect netting to keep them covered, uh, tightly covered, then you should do fine. Uh, so as in all plants, patience is key and being a hands-on gardener is always worth the time and the effort. So that's my information on brassicas that I have to impart to you. Uh, let me know down in the comments which brassicas that you like to grow. Which ones have you had problems with? How did you solve those problems? Which ones are have you've had no problems with? Um, there's, there's always challenges in your garden and these are the problem, my problem children out in the garden. But I've been finding ways to circumvent those pests and, um, and pull in great crops. So until the next time that we can go digging in the garden, bye.